Well, we won't get into that one right now. We will get into the Sacramento Kings. Katie, is it unfair to put too much, uh, too many hopes on this team that has uh, new players, a new coach, and by too many hopes, I mean hopes for a plan? I don't think it's unfair at all. You know, obviously, I think that's what the front office has been trying to build for since Monty McNair took over, and obviously, you know, it's been a, a kind of a brutal situation. If you think back to how it started with him, it was, you know, in the thick of COVID where quite honestly, like you couldn't see it. Sorry. There's a, <laughs> there's a, uh, I'm driving home from dropping my daughter off. There's an emergency. Sorry. Um, okay. yeah. So I think that, you know, it kind of stunted things a little bit for Monty and, and, uh, it's hard to, to take over a, a team and a, and a franchise and try and pick it up when really the whole league is operating in a really you know different way. But if you look at kind of what he's done and built towards, I talked about it on the broadcast the other day, like he's made some really good draft picks and they all have a commonality between them. They played for longer than a year in college. Um, so they're older, they're more experienced and their demeanor is so similar. When you look at, you know, Tyrese Halliburton, who I know everybody misses, I miss him too. Um, you look at Davion Mitchell and now Keegan Murray, like these are all guys that have a tremendous amount of, of, you know, commonalities between them in terms of demeanor, poise, experience. Um, and so I think that, you know, we're in, in the ability to, to defend that they can play both sides and can grow in that area. So I think we're seeing now what Monty's been trying to work towards. Right. So saying that, you know, now a few years in that, with the best roster, quite honestly, that I've seen this team have since I first came here in 2006 was, you know, I, my first year here was the first year that they missed the playoffs. It had Mike Bibby, you know, Kenny Thomas, Sharif Abdul-Rahim, um, Francisco Garcia, I think Kevin Martin, you know, like this is the best run our test. This is the best roster since that period. So I do not think it's asking too much or expecting too much for that to be the, the, the you know, bar that they're trying to at least reach. Katie, do you think an area that they have targeted that has to get better, I think we've all said it, has been defense. And, you know, I, I liked what they did the first preseason game, but the last game you guys called it, you saw it in person, you're down there floor level. It sure looked like they are, they're way more engaged there. But again, that's one couple of preseason games here. But yeah. are you noticing a tangible difference on that end of the floor? I, honestly, I feel like I am, um, but I'll, I'll be, you know, straightforward with everyone. Like last year during preseason felt the same way. Yeah. And I, I was like, wow, this, this team's really defending and they looked really good. And then the regular season came and the amount of practice time when it, when it drops after training camp, um, I, I think that that had a really large impact on the drop off that we saw after the beginning of the season and as the season went on. I mean, they just were not good defensively last year. But I can say that they have better defenders. And I can say that I like the system. You know, like I got to go to practice yesterday and watching film with them and all this. I like what they're what they're doing, what their intentions are. I like, you know, kind of how the coaching staff is schemed and game plan things. And so, you know, when you look at that, I'm like, yeah, they have better talent. They have better defenders. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, but skeptically so, because I'm still like, you know, a lot of people a little bit brutalized by the past. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, by the way, did I miss this earlier? But, um, did you say your first year here was the first year they missed the playoffs? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Dave, we've talked about this multiple times. However, I did leave for three years in between. So we're, we're not playing this blame game on me, okay? He uh, is. Well, we were playing a game uh, on the phone the other night. It was after uh, the, the, the game against the Blazers. You and I were talking off air about this team, the future, and whether or not to fall in the trap, as you just kind of alluded to, of believing in the preseason. But you had some good points in that conversation about – you, maybe you're not taking this to the bank that they're going to win every night by 30, but you're noticing some things in the preseason that very much can carry over to the um, regular season. You know, I think one of the biggest things that I, I've noticed is the amount of continuous movement on both ends of the floor, which bodes well for defense, like we were just talking about, but also offensively. You know, I mean, they had a lot of offensive talent last year as well. Scoring was not a problem. However, I never felt like the offense was, as good or as smooth as it could be. And I think a lot of it was guys kind of taking it upon themselves 
and just kind of doing like heroic things at times, right? Like making plays, making things happen instead of necessarily plays being created by teammates and by a, by a system. Right. And so I think that the amount of movement and the, the offensive sets and system that Mike Brown has put in and instilled in, the, in these guys really fit the personnel well. And um, then it, the same goes on the defensive end. I mean, they're really, really moving. You're having multiple, multiple efforts. And, and that's really what it takes. You know, in the NBA, it's not about, you know, the first or second effort defensively. Like, if teams are going to, to you know, be good offensively and be dominant, which a lot of teams really are now, that's where the league's at. You've got to be able to make, you know, four or five efforts to make sure that you're closing out plays and not not playing 22 seconds of great defense. And then that last two seconds is where you foul or you give up the open layup or the shot. So, you know, I was I was impressed and I was impressed from the, the first group on the floor through the last group on the floor. Katie, you brought up the commonality of, of what Monty has drafted, whether that's Halliburton, Mitchell and now Murray and all seemed NBA ready, all seem mature and poised. And then I think what excites Kings fans is how NBA ready they've been. And then what is their ceiling? So if we go to the newest one, it's Murray. He was great in the summer. He's been great so far. How great can he be? Where do you think his ceiling ultimately is as a King? You know, it's tough to say now. I, I, because I don't know him that well yet. Right. Like we've seen him through summer league. We've seen him, you know, through the training camp and the preseason and he's a little bit harder to judge. Right. Like, I get like the game we called the other night. I'm like so impressed by him and what he's doing. But it's like a lot of times I found myself kind of a little speechless. Like I didn't really know what to say or how to respond to this amazing play because he turns around and there's zero expression, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what it is. Like even announcers feed off of the, the energy and the expression of players. And he's like so, stone cold, like no expression. I think even a little bit more to me than Tim Duncan, just because he's doing some different things and he's young. So it stands out to me. So I think that he is so incredibly skilled and gifted, but I, I really, to answer that truthfully, I want to see him in some real NBA games. I want to ask me that question, Jay Ross, mm -hmm. when we're a quarter of the way through the season and I can give an honest answer. Okay. But right now, just, you know, generally, I think the sky is the limit for him. I, I think that a lot of the the kind of pre-draftings of like, oh, this is kind of who he is. He's peaked, you know, because he's been in college longer. And, and so and he wasn't as, as highly touted coming out of high school. All of those storylines around him, I don't agree with them. I think that he has, the sky is the limit for him. But I want to see once he's up against NBA competition and when I see what Mike Brown plans to do with him, if he's going to keep him coming off the bench or if he's going to insert him into that starting lineup and play him against stars every night. All right. I only got 30 seconds here before we got a break. It's a real 30 seconds, not a Katie 30 seconds. I got to ask you. Uh, uh, a day of 30 seconds. Other than Keegan Murray, assuming he starts, who is your X factor? Who's the person you're really watching going into the season? Ooh, tough question. Uh, Terrence Davis is one that I'm really, really curious about outside of obviously, you know, Keegan. I think Keegan's an, an easy one to answer. But Terrence Davis was really, really good last year before he got injured. And he had a little bit of a rough year. And so this team has a lot more shooting. I want to see what Terrence is going to bring and how he's going to fit in. So that is, you know, off the cuff. That's the first one. Perfect. Katie Christensen, each and every nice. Wednesday at 8 a.m. You're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me borrow the jersey. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, hey, hey Dave. Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> good, well to, done. good to see you. Thank you. I'll text you after the show and hear from guys. you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Katie, we'll take a break.